Folks, just a reminder, this press conference does offer simultaneous interpretation in English and French. <laughs> there you go. In English and French, if you need the app, you can scan one of the QR codes on the side of the wall or raise your hand and a volunteer will bring it to you. This is also being streamed live on my info. If you have a question, just use the Ask OIS button at the top of the screen. I want to welcome the three medalist from the men's 100 meters, the bronze medalist from the United States of America with a time of 9.81, Fred Curley, the silver medalist from Jamaica with a time of 9.79, Kashane Thompson, and the gold medalist with also with a time of 9.79, winning by five one thousandths of a second from the United States of America, Noah Lyles. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We have microphones in the room and we'll come over to you. Please state your name and your outlet before you ask your question. Right here in the back, you've been waiting patiently. Congratulations to all three men. Um, from the pictures, it looks like there might have been someone trying to get onto the track just before the 100 meters. Did you see that? And Because there was a long wait before the start. And do oh, you that think- that what we were waiting for. And do you think it was a too long a start? And did, how did that make you all th feel three? Did you f did it make any of you tight, for instance? I, I I didn't see anybody trying to get on the field, but I was wondering what we were waiting for. Not gonna lie. But in the meantime, the crowd was just constantly getting more and more hype. So I, you know, it didn't feel like it was completely dead. I ain't, I ain't. Uh, we didn't see nothing. No, no I guess nothing. we didn't see nothing. All right, right here in the back. <laughs> um, Anderson Emerald from City of Smag. So, question for Noah as well as Kashane. So, Noah, can you talk a little bit more about what you said to Kashane after the race when you didn't see the time? And Kashane, can you talk a little bit about you know what Noah was telling you as well? Yeah, I uh, after the race, I came up. We were waiting for uh, the names to pop up, and I'm gonna be honest. I came over. I was like, I think you got that one, big dog. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he was out there in lane four, and I was in lane seven. And I couldn't really see what was going on over there so I just had to keep you know running like I was gonna win it and you know something said I need to lean and I was like I'm gonna lean because you know it was that type of race and it was crazy as my you know by Ralph Mann was like before I left for the Paris he's like this is how close first and second is gonna be away from each other and I can't believe how right he was yeah pretty much the same thing that Noah said it was really a close race you know because I couldn't really see see Noah based on the lane that we were in. So I saw that I cleared who is to my near left and my near right, but I couldn't see him. It was that close. So when we both crossed the line, as, as he said, he came to me and said, hey, man, I think you got it. But I'm, I was like, wow, and I'm not even sure because it was that close. Mm. Hi, in the back, uh, Nick McCarville for Olympics.com. Noah, you've talked a lot about wanting to raise the profile of this sport, and I think you've done a lot of work to do that. How much does it, is it satisfying? What are the, I don't want to put words in your mouth, what are the feelings for you to arrive at the sport's biggest stage and to, I think you probably helped raise yeah. the profile tonight. I mean, it, it feels it feels good to back it up. You know, I've done a lot of work throughout the last three years since 2021. And even in 2021, I took on a lot of sponsors to try and get my name out there. And unfortunately, it didn't work out for me. And I've seen tons of scenarios where athletes come in as a favorite and it doesn't work out for them. And I didn't want to take advantage of that. And knowing that that could happen, you know, continues to fuel me. Um, and that's just, you know, constantly going that's extra step knowing that at any time you know somebody can pop up I mean we started the season and a lot of people were saying oh it's going to be a slow year in the hundred well it wasn't no slow year in the hundred <laughs> right here in the front Uh, Coley Harvey, ESPN. Uh, Noah, this is for you. You mentioned that you wanted to stand behind your words. Uh, have you thought about what the future might look like now for you in terms of not just your profile in the sport, but what the sport will look like for American track going forward? I want my own shoe. I want my own trainer. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Exactly. No, I want a sneaker. There ain't no money in spikes. There's money in sneakers. <laughs> And even Michael Johnson didn't have his own sneaker. You know, that's, I feel like for the, the 
how many medals we bring back, for the notoriety we get, you know, the fact that that hasn't happened, that's crazy to me. And I was like, yeah, that needs to happen. Is there anything else that you would like to see for yourself? To be honest, I want to see a continuation of the ability to take advantage of moments for our sport. Sprint came out, it did amazing. And I know that season two is already being filmed. You know, we've been, of course, they right over there. <laughs> but it, it, it's, they've been doing a good job and getting already our name out. So what we need to do as a sport is take advantage and say, hey, we need to make this as available as possible for people to come and watch. Not you have to go in through back alley websites to try and find or pay to watch websites to be able to get a hold of this. You know, this needs to be accessible because this is a world sport. So we need to be able to show it to the world. Ewan Crumley Athletics Weekly, a couple of questions for Noah. Firstly, how much do you practice dipping for the line like that and it coming down to timing? And also, you've mentioned before that 2021 has fueled everything to get you to this stage now. When did the planning kick in after Tokyo and what did you do first to, to get on this journey? Uh, shoot, I'm trying to remember. The, what was the first question again? <laughs> How much do I practice? Uh, no, I do not practice uh, dipping all that much. But I would say I've, I've, you know, have a decent history with dipping at the line. You know, throughout history and through uh, my high school career and stuff like that. You know, a lot of races it's come down to dips, and I've been able to, <laughs> Vernon, uh, been able to, you know, win. So I'm not going to say that I practice it all that much, but. You know, I do have a good history with that. In terms of how, when did it fuel me, um, I'd say I was fueled as soon as I saw this in my hands. That's when I was fueled. Once again, congratulations to all of you on your achievements and Noah and to all of you. Um, is there a spiritual side to you that inspires you in, in times like this that keeps you going? Is that to all of us? Yes, perhaps, yeah, to you first, Noah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I have a, I'd say I have my own journey with God, and, you know, um, it, it's, I wouldn't say it's the, the most normal, you know, I went to church early on, you know, got the good word on me, watched a bunch of veggie tales, <laughs> but, uh, you know, there, there's been times where I've had churches that I feel were trying to, you know, use the word and they you misused it. And it, it broke a lot of trust. So I had to find my own journey with God. And a lot of that came through track because there was a lot of times when I was like, I don't know if I could do this. And I'm like, God, if you really want me to do this, you know, show me, give me a sign. And he gave me a sign. I said, I'm, I'll never doubt you again. You guys want to take that one? <laughs> Fred? Fred? I'm good. All right. Let's go right here. Steve Futterman for NOAA. Uh, we, we haven't heard from you at this news conference what it means to you and what, what was going through your heart and mind when you actually saw that you had etched out Kashane. Yeah, it, it was a crazy moment because, like I said, I did think that Kashane had that. Um, and I was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm really... You know, gonna have to swallow my pride, which I don't have a problem doing. Respect deserves respect, and you know everybody on this, everybody in the field, to be honest, came out knowing that they could win this race, and you know that's the mindset that we have to have. You know, iron sharpens iron, of course. And when I saw my name, I was like, I didn't do this against a slow crowd or a field. I did this against the best of the best on the biggest stage with the biggest pressure. And seeing that name, I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> there it is. And I wasn't even entered in the 100 in 2021. So that was, you know, here I am, first Olympics in the 100, you know, going around now the Olympic champion and, you know, having that title of not just at world championships, but at the Olympics of world's fastest man. And were you at ease, it seemed, when you came out, the jumping, you, you seemed almost jubilant before the race. Was it a, were you at ease with yourself? Were you nervous at all at the start? I'm not going to say... Uh, I wouldn't say nervous. I'd say I was extremely curious to what was going to happen. That's how me and my therapist phrase it. I'm curious to what I'm going to do. 
um, how am I going to pull this off, basically, uh, situations like that. Because easily, you know, I came in third fastest, you know, from the semis. I'm like, you know, th this is going to be serious. This is not going to be easy. And I, like, said, okay, my therapist said, you need to let go. You need to relax. And you need to be yourself. And I watched as we were all going out. I saw Shane hit the yell. I'm like, dang, that's my thing. <laughs> that's crazy. Man, it's hitting the Super Saiyan yell. That's crazy. All right. I guess I got to do another thing. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'm not stopping at this, you know, little point. You know, I'm running out into the crowd because this crowd was some a crowd that really wanted the energy to back behind. And I'm like, they would give me the energy that I'm looking for. Hey there, uh, Mark Kisla, Denver Gazette. One serious for no, and one not so serious. Okay. With your with your therapist, and as hard as you've worked, how do you prepare yourself for the realization that it's probably going to come down to a, a this much, like you said, or five one thousandths of a second, either way, and the not so serious. Now that you've beaten these two illustrious runners wins the challenge race against Snoop. <laughs> uh, he was asking when I'm going to race Snoop. Uh, <laughs> uh, shoot, if Snoop wants to set it up, set it up and we'll race. <laughs> um, in terms of preparing, you know, it's, uh, it's been years in the making. You know, as I said, the journey started after 2021 when I received the bronze medal. And I said, I got to change. You know, I got to evolve. No year is the same. And I'm not going to treat it the same. No, I'm not going to feel the same each time I step on the track. I'm not going to feel the same every championship. And I definitely didn't feel the same as I am now as I did at Budapest. You know, in Budapest, I felt like, you know, I was coming in as a favorite because I had the fastest time. This one, I was like, oh, shoot, these guys are ready. You know, I need to be ready. And... It, no matter what, all I need is a lane, and I'll be able to go out there and prove who I am. We're going to do just two more questions right here and then right back there. And Noah, that's part one complete. How confident are you now of going to win on all three sprint? Pretty confident. <laughs> I can't lie. Um, you know, Kenny definitely put up a fast time at trials, and that definitely woke me up. And I, I was very proud of him, and, you know, he's definitely not going to take – you know, how he did here in the 100, lying down. He's going to say, you know, I'm going after it in the 200 because he knows he, you know, he can go after it. But my job is to make sure that <laughs> I'll just leave it there. I'll be winning. <laughs> Talk your shit, man. <laughs> that man. <laughs> that man ain't winning. None of them is winning. When I come off the turn, they will be depressed. <laughs> Last question. Marcus Thompson with The Athletic. Noah, you've talked a lot about the wanting guys to talk and the competitive aspect of it. When, when you're in a race and you see guys ahead of you, what happens inside of you? Like what, what gets you to another level? Because that feels like the most competitive thing. I'd say that there's, there's quite a bit of emotions. At first, it's like a little bit of frustration, but then it becomes, you know, like, all right, excitement. And it's like, all right, what am I about to do back at practice to make sure that this doesn't happen again? And constantly being like, all right, where can I improve? Because it's, I'm now excited that there's somebody out there who has proven that they can beat me. So I'm like, Shh, let's keep going. I'm always on a, a self-discovery to better myself. And that's how I view, you know, getting beat. Once somebody beats me, it's like, all right, here's another opportunity to better myself. Fred Curley, Kashane Thompson, Noah Lyles, the three fastest men on earth. Thanks, man. Thank you, guys. We can stop the stream, and we'll start the hammer throw press conference in about five minutes. Yep. No, we can't do that in a press conference. You guys come this way. Let's get out of here.